as we are dealing with more and more customers in remote work situations, we're certainly seeing our cloud service providers and our enterprises across the board uh, react differently, uh, different workloads that they're having to deal with. So there's aspects of network latency, there's aspects of scalability, uh, peak load times where teams are now really trying to work together. We're spending a lot more time on video having conversations. And that obviously is very different than just an audio stream in terms of the network bandwidth that's required. So that's changing the workload itself. It's changing the scalability that's needed. Uh, and it's changing the capacity because so many more people are connecting through those modes simultaneously. Hello, my name is Rebecca Weekly, and I'm the director for cloud business strategy and platform enabling here at Intel. This feels like disaster recovery, but it's making everyone question their business continuity planning. Regardless, this will happen again. There will be other issues, other problems and challenges. So cloud native architectures internally, your methodology and how well you've deployed uh, to help with a burst model to a hybrid cloud scenario into a public cloud service provider really can help you understand a peak capacity load and disaster recovery scenario. How you do your cloud native architecture certainly matters significantly in terms of how you can leverage public cloud service providers, but there's Azure Arc in terms of a hybrid strategy. There's you know, workspaces from Amazon. Um, certainly Microsoft has done a ton with their Teams integration as a collaboration site. There's interesting up and comers who you may not have even heard of a few years ago, like Zoom that are you know, taking off like wildfire. And then you even have, you know, aspects of, of CSPs in, you know, collaboration within your social sphere that is being used by activists, communities, um, you know, folks who are in, you know, not a traditional enterprise space maybe, but certainly trying to reach out to where a user base is that they need. But the big enterprise flows are really around collaboration, video streaming, and how they can really uh, enable remote desktop engagement so that they don't lose productivity. What I think businesses are realizing is there's this whole transformation of insights from the information they're capturing that they can leverage. So we're actually seeing an influx of additional logging information that seems maybe counterintuitive, but is certainly there to understand all aspects of margin. And then there's all sorts of interesting solutions that are coming out to help with AI services, cool players like Splunk who have been in the ecosystem, but are getting some rapid uptake in terms of uh, efficacy of usage of systems. So I think all of them, whether you know just standard containers and container orchestration methodologies to do better with the utilization of your hardware and flexibility into the public cloud. Um, all of that is just, you know, 10 years of business transformation sort of being pulled into a year or maybe two uh, as we all adjust to a new methodology. The biggest sort of trend of increased remote work is this aspect of how am I actually servicing my business effectively, ideally without growing my footprint um, significantly in spend. And so the first thing that we've found that we engage with customers on and, and are talking actively with them about is utilization of the hardware they have. So there's lots of tools that you can leverage to just understand your utilization of your server. And the biggest thing any one person can do to increase utilization of a server that I've seen is just container orchestration. Virtualization in general, right? Multiple users on one server being able to leverage it as opposed to a bare metal implementation. Then once you are there, people will find that there are bottlenecks in different spaces, especially now that we have new workloads like video, you know, just increasing. So that usually ends up being either networking bandwidth is your next problem or your storage access rate, you know, the, the rate of IOPS to, to feed all of those different users now on the server goes up. And so you have to go and build out more storage capacity as you increase your compute capacity. Now, you also obviously are going to need more memory for all the different users that you're putting on that server. Now you're putting more load on your network. You need to actually look at, are you well provisioned for your network? Then, you know, oh, do I have enough storage, enough data to store everything that's coming in, especially now that it might be video streams instead of just logs or, you know, 
information about insights we're trying to collect, which is going to be a more complicated data type than just, again, a text log, which is how a lot of the world sort of stores information about how people log in and do various things on the web. When it comes to scalability and availability, I think the first action we always recommend when we're engaging with a customer is to look at your utilization and make sure that you have done your level best to take good advantage of the hardware you have. Um, and the best way to do that is usually a cloud native architecture. So whether it's containers or virtualization, you get a lot more goodness out of your server if you're actually able to take advantage of that. So you put multiple users on one server, you can get to a sweeter spot in your TCO in terms of your memory capacity, and you certainly can get to a better place in terms of utilization. So if you've done that work, then there's all sorts of solutions in the ecosystem to help you burst into the public cloud in a disaster recovery kind of scenario. Because I, I think the challenge of this time is not this time, but I think it's making every customer look at their business continuity planning. It's making every customer look at their disaster recovery scenarios and what they can do. So are you geo-replicated in multiple locations? It's a good moment, I think, for every enterprise to think through their strategies for that. and in the serviceability, burstability, you know, extra or backup recovery scenarios, the public cloud is certainly an option. Even the smallest players are gonna be at at least 41 different locations. I mean, they have done a huge amount to ensure that they are resilient to disasters, to, you know, any kind of scenario uh, for just flexible capacity needs that, of their users. So that burstability into the public cloud, if you're using a container service like Kubernetes, every major service provider has a managed Kubernetes service. If you're using you know, a multi-cloud solution like Anthos or Arc, you know, those solutions can allow you to take advantage or VMware uh, or a remote desktop service like Citrix. What they're gonna allow you to do is have that service running in your cloud or running in the public cloud. And you can take advantage, everyone has a VMware integration. You know, everybody has core needs, core capabilities, core ISVs, whether it's you know, SAP or um, your Oracle database, you can purchase those on-prem or you can use those in the public cloud. When I look at Intel and what Intel's trying to accomplish as we are partnering with our customers through this time, it is to help them understand their workloads, their needs, their infrastructure. We are participating in FPGAs, in AI accelerators, obviously in CPUs, in SSDs, in new classes of technology like sil silicon photonics and you know Optane DC persistent memory. Uh, you know all of them come together to have this interrelationship. So when we're testing systems, we're not just testing a CPU. When I talk through like, hey, we've used VTune and that's why VTune does more than just CPU perf. It actually looks at every component on the system to give you an understanding of where the bottlenecks in your workload are. That's because we did it for ourselves <laughs> as we were debugging these systems. You know, when we go out and we work with a customer, we're really working with you to try and understand as your technology partner where we can help a lot of our volume comes through a channel set of sales, a channel set of activities. So it will be your ODM or your OEM who you actually purchase from. And everything we do with you to engage with you as an end user is actually not a direct relationship. It's a direct relationship that we have to try and help you understand how to get the most out of all the different products we can bring. From the workload level, from the vertical level, all the way through to, you know, helping you pick the right CPU SKU if that's what you want. Um, that's really how we want to engage with our customers.